off camera, I took my tape template off the guitar and I made an MDF template out of it. Um, I've left the neck uh, carve out of this. Um, this is more um, just to make sure that this pattern doesn't get lost. Um, the way I did the tape, uh, I wasn't really um, confident that it, it, would, it would hold up very long. And so I made this just as my uh, template. And so now what I'm gonna do is just mark it out on my pick guard material and then go over to the bandsaw and roughly cut this out. This is really gonna be a test to see um, what tools I can get away with. If when I cut this with the bandsaw, if I don't see any melting or, or anything else like that, um, I think I'll be a little bit more confident to try um, using a, a flush cut router bit to um, size up the material. Uh, when you look on the Stumac website, they sell a router bit um, that's basically looks like just a, a 45 degree chamfer bit, and they call it the pick guard. Um, routing or pick guard edge edge bit and so to me that implies you can use a router bit um, to cut these out and so you know part of the fun of this is just seeing how things go uh, this material is a little bit expensive um, so I don't want to mess up too many times but uh, we'll get started and, and see how things go Besides the normal uh, bandsaw blade marks, uh, there doesn't appear to be any sort of uh, melting here. And so um, I'm a little more, more confident now that I can use a pattern bit to actually route out this shape. I have my flush trim bit in the router and I'm gonna go ahead and trim off uh, the excess um, using my, my pattern. I don't expect a ton of resistance from the plastic just based on how uh, things cut with the bandsaw, but of course, you know, I'll use my uh, safety holder just in case. So that wasn't too bad at all. I got a nice clean cut here, um, this you know, protective plastic notwithstanding. Um, but you can see I actually got uh, two very slight kickbacks there. And so uh, that was surprising to me. I was climb cutting. Um, so it just goes to show, even if you uh, don't expect there to be uh, an issue cutting something, um, you can get a kickback. I remembered I don't have a chamfer bit, uh, but I do have a quarter inch round over and at the level I'm going to be cutting, you know, just a, a fraction of a millimeter, uh, I don't think the distinction between a round over and a perfect 45 degree chamfer is gonna make a difference. Uh, so I'm gonna try it out here, see how it works, and then I'll let you know. This looks awful. <laughs> uh, this round, I had the round over a bit higher than I expected and it actually started rounding off my template here. And so that's um, not ideal. And as you can see, um, you know, it has a really large border. Uh, I'm gonna have to really take a look at this and see if I wanna keep it. Uh, I really was not expecting that. So uh, that's why I use test pieces. I didn't, so I guess tacitly this becomes my test piece. Um, so yeah, I'll take this into, you know, over to my workbench, take a look and see, uh, see what we're going to do about this. Over at the workbench, you can see, um, this isn't going to work out. This is uh, a cartoonishly big bevel. Um, you know, that in itself isn't that big of a deal. I, I could potentially just go with my, um, spindle sander and actually knock off some of that. But the bigger issue is actually that... 
I don't know if it's my, my table isn't flat or I had some material or, or something in there, but um, the cut for the, the tortoise shell layer uh, isn't very clean. And so, you know, this concerns me with this method. I mean, you know, it, it's possible that this is all just part of using the wrong bit, um, but I'm wondering if I should uh, next time actually go through and do either a very small hand chamfer or possibly even do this with a chisel. Um, obviously I'm not gonna do, I'm not doing these in, in large um, numbers. And so uh, using a chisel might be a way for me to get a really, you know, clean uh, cut without having too much of uh, a bezel here. And so uh, I'm gonna chalk this one up to failure. Um, you know, should have measured the, the bit size instead of eyeballing it, but uh, you know, that's all part of the process. So um, the good thing I did learn today though, is, is this material isn't that hard to cut with a router and a bandsaw. And so um, I'm gonna keep at it, figure out how to get this uh, piece right, uh, or the next piece I make right. And uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching everybody. I thought that was the end of the video, but I kept on working on the pick guard and I think I've got uh, an interim solution. So the first thing I did was um, I went to my belt sander, spindle sander, and ground down some of the, um, the, the comically large bezel. And so that got me back to a uh, 90 degree edge. And then I tried to sand using the, the table. Um, the table on my spindle sander actually rotates down I tried to do that, that didn't quite work, um, but I was on the right track. And so with a bunch of um, rasping, I've actually gotten to the point here where I've got a pretty decent edge. It's not exactly where I'd want it to be, um, but you know, that's just a function of, of taking more time to do it. And so what you can see is, you know, obviously I still need to cut out the, the, um, the neck pocket area so this fits down, um, but overall, you know, the, the pick guard I think is working pretty successfully. It's covering up the areas that um, I want to cover up, and um, overall, it should work pretty well. And so, uh, this is great when you can have sort of a happy accident. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier in, in several videos, when you're making your own thing, it actually doesn't matter if you go slightly inside the line, or in this case, grinding off probably a millimeter's worth of material and then doing a bevel uh, again, it doesn't matter because ultimately, you know, this is a one-off guitar um, and I can make things fit later. So now this is really the end of the video. Thanks everyone for watching. And um, I'm gonna keep making progress on this and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>